Hey, good morning, and it's early in the morning. I was uh, asked about uh, just some very basics on the Monarch 10 E drive systems. The early drive system, the very earliest, one guy chimed in, uh, he's got the very earliest Sunstrand um, hydraulic drive. And of course, with the hydraulics, you've got variable speed because you can open a valve and get a motor to run faster or slower. Then they went to uh, direct current. And uh, the way they did that is uh, they generated uh, the uh, direct current with a generator uh, run by an AC motor. And it's very much uh, like... Uh, like an electric train, you know, toy, toy electric train, and you got the little transformer and you can vary the speed of, of the train. Now the transformer takes the AC current from your wall and then turns it into direct current and you have that little, uh, little control to make your train go faster or slower. Now, the, this, uh, they, they've taken that a little bit further. Now, those little motors and trains um, have uh, little permanent magnets uh, as the field for, for uh, field magnetism. And then you put uh, current into uh, the uh, commutator with the brush that end. And then the motor, the motor will run... Um, and speed up as you increase the current into it. Well, they did something a, li a little different with that field. And instead of uh, magnets like a little motor, it has coils. And uh, they put uh, direct current into those coils. So uh, you got uh, the way this is, they put 220 volts direct current uh, maximum into uh, the uh, armature, okay, the commentator end of the armature. Then they put 110 or 125 volts somewhere in there into the field. Okay, when you have 125 volts into the field and you have 220 volts going to the armature, the motor will, will speed up to what's called base speed. Now the base speed on a, on a Monarch, on a uh, DC motor, is around 1150 RPMs. Okay, now the spindle goes uh, 2500 or up to 4000 RPMs. So you basically have the machine with full voltage to the field and the uh, armature running at 1150 rpm and the way they increase the speed is reduce that uh, field voltage which overall i suppose reduces resistance and it causes that armature to speed up and this is the kicker once that armature speed speeding up with full voltage to uh the armature, if something happens in the field, all of a sudden is non-existent. With the motor already spinning, that motor will speed up so fast it'll blow the wires off the armature. It's called a runaway. So all the monarchs have a field safety. They have a you know a field loss relay. So if they're if the field voltage gets below a certain um, amount, the whole machine shuts down. So I, I've never heard of one running away, okay? But it, it's possible that, <laughs> that that can happen. And that's the problem with uh, cheap uh, controllers, direct current controllers and stuff, is they don't have field weakening. So you see uh, uh, people that dinker with that stuff put in a separate knob, to, to cut down the field to get the to get the high speed.
So if, if you don't have field weakening, uh, the, the lathe's not going to run much faster than 1100 to 1500 RPM, I suppose, depending on the pulleys. There's some differences in them, I guess. But um, so that's kind of how that works is, um, is they put um, voltage to the armature and then voltage to the field. Okay, let's have a look at this old motor generator, and I can show a few things and, and maybe try to explain it. It is a bit complicated, but yeah, you know, you, you kick it around a little bit, uh, it, it starts making sense. And uh, I remember when I first got into these machines, first time I ran it was, you know, at a company, and they had electricians take care of this stuff. And the, <laughs> the electricians, uh, you know, they... Uh, they have their own job and the machine operator has them. But if you buy one of these, you're gonna to have to put the electrician's hat on. Okay, and I can, maybe I can help you a little bit. Get started. Let's have a look here at the power source for the DC motor, okay? Now on this one, this is a motor generator. And I explained before, and I, and I think you saw what I did with, uh, with my phase converter. Okay, on the back of this, this is the direct current end of the generator. And this is the one that puts out 220 volts direct current, okay? Let's see if you can get the light in there and you can see the uh, commutator and the brushes and all that. Okay, that puts out the 220 volt. Then it's got a pulley here and a belt that goes up here. This is called the exciter. And actually what it is, is a, a 120 volt direct current version of this, okay? Okay, 220 volts to the field, I mean to the armature from this, 120 volts uh, to the field out of this, okay? This, pres this provides um, the electricity, the current needed for the field. So, let's go, uh, and okay, of course, this is driven by, on the other end, this is a single unit with a three-phase, about a six-and-a-half horsepower motor, okay? So you put six-and-a-half horsepower <laughs> into this, and you're going to get three horsepower out of it. Okay, let's look at the other end here. This is the power end. This, this is what... Um, rectifies AC current to DC current uh, for this other end. Okay, now over here, we have the motor back in here. You see, that's really a large motor. It's actually, this, it's a three horsepower motor, and I've seen 50 horsepower AC motors that size. It's really quite large. Now, right here is a two-speed reduction gearbox that is hooked onto the end of the motor there. Okay, so this is your back gear. They put it on the motor to isolate it from the system, from the spindle. Um, and, and only thing that connects the spindle is the V-belts. See? Runs right up there. Then this little belt here is the feeds. This all belt, this drives the feed box, okay? All right. Okay, now here's your control panel right here. Now, the AC end of the motor is started by my goofed up switch back here. That's all that does is start the AC motor uh, with the buttons. Okay, do you have the buttons there? Yeah, they're there. Okay. So that starts the, that generator. Then, right here, if you can see it, there's two giant Allmite uh, rheostats. And there's a chain right here. Now, one of the rheostats, you can see the, I don't know if you can see it, it's right here. And I'll jiggle it back and forth. See that? Okay, so when you have this thing um, at 1100 RPM, 
on the tachometer up here, you're giving full field voltage to the, the motor fields on the outer part of that case. You can actually see those big coils. I'll rotate that, uh, rotate that armature a little bit there. Maybe you can kind of see the commentator and things. Okay. So the generator puts uh, 220 volts to the armature here. The exciter, that small generator, energizes the fields. So full voltage on the field, full 220 voltage on, on the um, uh, armature equals 1100 RPMs, all right? Now, if you want to go slower, you turn the speed knob here, down, which moves that rheostat. Okay, see that? And uh, when you go slower than 1100, you still have full field voltage. And then uh, you start reducing the armature voltage to get slow speed. Okay, so we're, we're at slow speed. Now we're going to go back up to uh, 1100. 50 RPM base speed and now we want to go faster and what happens with the rheostat here to go faster we maintain 220 volts to the armature and then start reducing the field voltage and that's how these things get up to that high speed okay reducing the field voltage then in here in the control panel, there's uh, a bunch of stuff here. Now these things here, these resistors are buffers, and it keeps uh, the machine from slamming, like when I'm going from reverse to uh, forward. And this is where um, the aftermarket and the ding-dong and short pants and all these uh Termite and uh, stink finger website and all that shit just goes to hell. It doesn't work. It's uh, switching and uh, uh, stopping, and that's where that's where this thing's going to really heat up. That's where that's where the problems uh, of aftermarket stuff doesn't work. Is uh, Forward and reversing, like you need to do cutting threads with precision on these machines. And uh, I showed this machine running real slow. You can tap with it and all kinds of things. But the machine will do it all day long because it's an <laughs> industrial duty. And those little tiny drives don't have switches like this. See these big contacts? Now these are DC. Uh, all DC powered here on this machine. Uh, on the module drive, you'll have a mix. So we have uh, anti-plugging relays so it doesn't slam when you uh, um, switch directions. It's like buffered. Like when I flip the lever all the way from forward to reverse directly, the, uh, the machine, the anti plug a uh, plugging relay kicks in and uh, the uh, machine goes uh, into reverse by uh, shorting the armature. Instead of putting 220 volts to the armature, the armature is shorted out into these coils right here. And uh, that breaks the machine to a rapid stop. <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty interesting, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start the machine up, and it's louder in hell because it's got those bearings uh, that need to re be replaced in that motor generator. So bear with the noise, and uh, I'm going to switch it back and forth and change the speed so we can watch this control panel a little bit, okay? Sounds like a plan. Okay. Well, I'll just go over here. Now, <laughs> my uh, switch is still not working, so I'm going to sneak around here and I'm going to start it with a stick. I did it without getting electrocuted. Okay, we're going to watch where the speed knob is here. I'm going to turn it all the way down.
Look at that fix. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to thoroughly clean this machine and I'm going to pack it up and uh, I'm going to crate it uh, and, and deal with it later and uh, I can crate it and it'll be fine. I'll build a little doghouse for it. And <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with the machine, but I think uh, I think I'll find another one and put this drive in it, you know. Uh, it's kind of cool that this machine has ran for so many decades and stuff, but uh, uh, I think I want to uh, up it a little bit, you know. Uh, it's, it, <laughs> it's really badly worn. So uh, th I'll think about that. I just got a lot of things to do here with the other equipment. So I'm going to clean this up real good. I, I don't like to pack stuff away dirty. You know, it's nice to clean it up because then when I get to it, it's going to be clean. It's not going to have that coagulated stinky oil and stuff in it. Okay, now let's have a quick look over here at the um, module drive lathe. And it's very, very much the same. Okay, except for, let's look. Open it up. Okay. There we go. Okay. This is the vacuum tube rectifier. This takes the um, AC current from the wall and through these vacuum tubes well, back here I am. <laughs> the camera shut off again. Okay, this rectifies um, your AC current from the wall to direct current for that um, direct current motor. And this has a very similar motor. Uh, it's, it's a little bit smaller and, and more powerful, but it's got the back, uh, the back gear on it. And it's also got the braking resistor, see? The braking resistors are mounted here. And uh, these big tubes rectify AC current for that 220 volt, the same um, as the motor generator machine over there, for the armature. This little tube here does the job of the exciter on the, on the other machine. It provides about 120, 25 volts to the field of a motor. And it works exactly the same to where uh, you have a motor, the, ba the, the base speed, full, full power, full 220 to the armature, uh, a full 120 to the uh, field. You have base speed of about 1150 RPMs to uh, decrease speed. From 1150, the field remains full, and then the voltage from the, the heavy tubes to the armature is reduced. Okay, now you go back up to base speed, full voltage armature, full voltage field to go higher than base speed, then the field uh, is reduced. Okay, <laughs> it's the same thing. It's just a little bit more complicated than the electric uh, electric train. And the starter in your car is uh, uh, direct current, you know. And uh, so in this machine here is kind of odd in, in a way uh, compared to the motor generator. It's got a mixture of AC and DC going on in here, <laughs> which is a little bit more confusing. It's got quite a few more wires and things like that. And then it's got a, a, a speed control circuit, and that's controlled uh, uh, by the module. Okay, then over in this compartment, it's just a bunch of switches, like like that like that switch panel on the uh, on the other one. I've had this open, so that's how these things work. They have a, a separate motor from from um, your AC current in the wall. The current has to be rectified. Turn from alternating current to um, direct current, okay? And, and this one rectifies the current by uh, uh, the motor generator by creating its own uh, direct current by uh, using a motor running off the AC, 
you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing like that. Now, this is an interesting thing too. The, uh, you really get pure DC power off this motor generator, but you don't off the vacuum tubes. There's a funny little thing that goes on. I, I, I uh, realized this not a whole long time ago um, when I come across a, a problem related to it is uh, even though it changes it to DC, it's still got that 60 cycle pulse, like it's AC. You got, <laughs> so you got DC with a 60 cycle um, pulse and um, there's rectifier three in the module and, it, and it's only got two diodes. And um, that one can, tends to be a little bit of a problem. So if there's any problem or hiccup with, with the machine, it's usually in uh, Rectifier 3 that provides the missing pulse for speed control. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's really quite a complicated thing. And the one thing I want to point out is the switching on the on these things are, is heavy and big. And the switching on aftermarket little drives and stuff, so little tiny things hiding in there, and it's not up to the task. Uh, of course, you know, I work the machines, you know. If you just want to watch the spindle go around and uh, say, oh, i got the best lathe in the world, watch the spindle go around, I don't cut anything, then those kind of drives will be just fine. Okay, but if you really want to use the machine and especially take advantage of the threading capability, it's <laughs> you're going to have a, a, a hard time doing any of that stuff with the DC conversions. Now, a long time ago, before all this foo fa that crapped up on the internet about 2011 with one creep head. <laughs> the direction that people were going that was working is the VFD conversion. And it's got a lot more options. You can make the thing break, except for it costs more money and you got to graft this gearbox onto your conversion. And that makes uh, makes it a little bit harder, and people have done it, make an adapter plate and stuff like that. If you want something that works good, you actually have to work for it, you know? Like keeping one of these drives working good, the original drive, or coming up with a drive that's actually going to work for you. You know, it's it just costs more. It, uh, it's harder work. You got to do your research and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I think I explained this, uh, about as best I can and, and shown, you know, the separate motor. I don't know. I must have a bad battery in here. It, uh, in this camera, it just keeps shutting off. I don't know. Can't figure this thing out, but I got the most faulty GoPro camera made the nine. <laughs> But anyway, I I, uh, I think I uh, demonstrated uh, or shown basically the best I could. If uh, anybody's got any questions, be sure to ask. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to... Uh, uh, I'm not very uh, computer uh, savvy, but I'd like to figure out a way maybe to uh, figure out some kind of live deal or something like they do, like a chat or something to kind of uh, troubleshoot some of these machines, you know, in more or less real time and, and help people get them going. Okay, I will uh, be back with something. I've got, uh, I'm going to play with that horizontal mill a little bit today. We'll see what happens. Okay, you guys have a good day.